Evening, everybody. Comic crack. Um, hey, look at this. It's another uh, uh, video in the Richard Corbin series of videos that I've been doing. I think early in the year, I was just looking at the page to see. Um, I think it was early, early in uh, 2020 or late 2019 that I started doing some focuses on uh, Richard Corbin. So continuing that because I got a book in the mail today and uh, I read um, a Corbin book tonight, uh, which was <laughs> a fucking incredible read. Um, so the, the first thing we'll talk about quickly, um, I, I broke down and uh, I picked up uh, Neverwhere. So um, Neverwhere, let me just make sure I open this and get the information right here. So um, Den makes his appearance, Grimwit number two, September 1973, uh, expanded the short story into two parts for publication in Metal Herlant from 1975-1976. Um, and then it was eventually a 12-part series, Den, uh, and the first 12 issues of Heavy Metal Magazine, 1977 to 1978. We've looked at that previously when I was talking about Dan, and we did a comparison side to side um, with the uh, graphic novel versions and the comic versions, I think. And then we looked at the um, a couple of the Heavy Metal magazines. Um, he added a story, an epilogue, Den's Farewell, which was printed in issue number 13 from April 1978. So the original story without the epilogue uh, was published here for the first time. So um, February 1978, and then all 13 chapters featured in the trade paperback, Den Neverwhere from uh, Catalan in 1984. So this is what we have here. This is the, the first printing of it. Um, I mean, you know, it's been read. Um, there's a couple of the pages at the beginning that have come loose, so I'm going to be a little def. Uh, I'm going to be a little difficult. I'm going to be a little gentle with it. But um, we've seen this story. Uh, it's it's incredible. Um, it's Richard Corbin. There's a great forward, just giving some extra information. Uh, we'll open it up here as well. Like I said, we'll try to be very careful. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited. I've been watching it on uh, eBay for quite a while. Um, and then a deal came up. This deal came up that I just I just couldn't pass on. So I, I jumped on it. Uh, really excited to have this as part of the collection. Uh, so Fritz Lieber, San Francisco, 1977, does the introduction here. And uh, then the rest is the story. So like it says... It's the, without the epilogue is what we get here in this first, uh, first printing, first kind of collected edition. Um, it's, it's other than the, the couple of issues with the first few pages, the rest of it is in great shape. The colors really jump. I did a little kind of side by side with the, um, Den Neverwhere collection and it looks just as nice, uh, in both volumes. It looks incredible. So really excited to have that uh on the shelves there really really great um and then the the second book that we'll talk about in a little more detail i've had it for a little while showed it off in a video the hardcover of uh corbin's blood star not only corbin uh robert e howard there you go there's the spine there so Robert E. Howard of uh, Conan fame. Um, I can't say that I've read a lot of Conan. Um, it's not something that I thought would ever appeal to me, but I have to tell you that I fucking loved this story. Uh, it was a really, a really easy read. I'm just gonna take it out of the uh, dust jacket so we don't get anything messed up. Um, a really easy read and incredible black and white art. We'll look into it. So again, we just get a little bit of uh, an intro here with some samples of work. So Den 1973 exemplifies Corbin use of camera movement. So we get some just kind of discussion on Corbin's art style and how he moves his characters through the page and how he moves a camera through the page. Uh, so a little bit of just kind of insight. And then there's a, a uh, some text on uh, Robert E. Howard as well, too, before we finally get into Bloodstar. And um, 
a pretty interesting start to it. So basically we're seeing uh, the end of civilization as we know it, which then throws the planet back into um, a star gets too close to Pluto. Uh, they kind of get sucked into each other's orbit, which causes a lot of uh, extreme weather conditions on Earth. Uh, insofar as even professors in classes saying, uh, please pay attention. We are at the end of all our schooling. Uh, curiously, it seems that there is no point to human life to which the kids are kind of shocked. So then the, the, the teacher goes into why that is. Uh, everybody gathers and kisses each other goodbye pretty much. And we see the, the basically the destruction of most of humanity, which then launches us into kind of a... Um, Everybody goes back, the, those that are remaining go back to kind of uh, tribes and different uh, groups across the planet. And we jump, I believe it was 200 years into the, the future from that point. Uh, and we start following basically Bloodstar Jr. who's on a hunting trip with, uh, what was this guy's name? Uh, Grom is his name. So there's, uh, they're going hunting and they get attacked by these kind of wild boar creatures and Grom is uh, injured and on his deathbed he starts telling young Bloodstar of his father who uh, he never met, died when he was a baby. And the rest of the book is that history about, uh, about Bloodstar Sr. and uh, what happened in his life. And it's... It's really, really engaging. It's a really great story. Um, I was a bit, I'm a big fan. I, I, this comes highly recommended. And I mean, as with Corbin, uh, you get some incredibly polished panels and then you get some other stuff that feels like maybe it's a little bit rushed. Uh, but that's fine because overall, I mean, I like every era of Corbin. But this is still kind of of that era when he was doing a lot of um, uh, underground comics and things too. So there's still that kind of energy to it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I'm a little sold on this uh, on this story. I gotta say, we'll skip ahead to. So basically, this kind of slimy, wormish type of creature. Um, it almost feels like you know a uh, um, creature that cannot be described or. Uh, drawn by man. So basically, there's a corpse that comes jumping into the story playing a flute. Um, and uh, you start seeing the creature appear behind this kind of corpse. That's basically, I don't know if it, it's kind of supposed to lure people like a Pied Piper towards it. But then you get a little bit of a picture of it there. We'll cut to a, we'll go to a page where we get a full shot of this creature. Uh, let's see, there was a good one over here. There we go. So there we go. There's the, the shot of the, the creature itself that our, uh, that our hero Bloodstar finally goes toe to toe with after he um, crushes and kills a gigantic snake and extracts a bunch of poison from it to uh, dip about, I don't know, 12 or 13 arrows in. Yeah, man. It was an easy read. It was a fun read. Um, I fucking dug it. I, I, I love, love, love Corbin. The more that I, the more of his stuff that I get my hands on, uh, the more I love it. Like there's Crom there. Like, look at that. That's a fantastic piece of art. Uh, there is, I think Damien and I had talked about this before, and I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in a video, but Damien was talking about, I think it was Damien that was talking about, too bad there's not a collection of his underground work. And I believe there is, uh, Damien, if you end up watching this video. Um, I'm going to do a search for it, and I'll, I'll do my usual. I'll say that I'm going to put it in the description and probably won't put it in the, the crotch box. Uh, but I'll try my best to remember because I'm blanking on the name. I have seen it pop up on eBay, though. It's another one that I kind of check out every once in a while to see what it's going for. Uh, because I think that would be great, even though I have um, 
quite a lot of the, pardon me, single issues. Um, I think that would be a nice one to get my hands on. And then the last thing here, we get a, a young, I think 32, 35 year old Richard Corbin in the back of the book here with a, a mini bio. Um, so Blood Star is Richard Corbin's first major book and is adapted by him from a story by the classic fantasy adventure writer Robert E. Howard. Mr. Corbin is presently creating a series of other graphic novels with themes pertaining to science fiction, fantasy, and mythology. And uh, speaking of Damien, when I was kind of reading about this online, this is yet another book where uh, Bloodstar is a new revolutionary concept, a graphic novel. So is this the first time that a graphic novel was used? Uh, so another one for that debate there that... Uh, not a debate, I guess. It's not like we've had the debate, but it's come up a number of times over the years with uh, me and Damien. People saying they did the first graphic novel. So there it is. Hardcover. Fucking beautiful. Um, nothing on the back. Thanks very much, everybody. Just a quick video. I, I, I was going to wait until Sunday to chat, and I'm sure I'll chat about it again uh, with La Rasa, but I couldn't wait. Um, I've got a couple of things couple of other things on the slate that I've read that I'll talk about on Sunday. Um, I read Dracula, and then uh, last night I finished uh, Creepax's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and both of those books were fucking incredible. Um, incredible books. A big, big enjoyment reading both of those. Uh, I've got a couple of things standing by. Dig into some uh, Robert E. Howard Pigeons from Hell next. Right on, everybody. Thanks very much for tuning in and uh, we'll talk to you.